to the OKD Working Group Documentation Subgroup meeting for May 17th of 2022. And let's uh, jump right into the latest. Uh, don't forget to put your name in the uh, meeting notes if you're here. That way uh, we know that you were here. Post a link to those notes. There we go, to the HackMD. And uh, we'll start out, Brian, updates to uh, the technical documentation. Okay, so I've actually decided just push it live. So I've pushed it onto the actual site um, with a header saying it's work in progress. Uh, so there's, there's little point in actually doing it. This is meant to be a community effort. Why not just do it on the actual site? So it is now, um, you'll see we've now got a development section um, on the site. Um, I have moved things forward a little bit, but um, <laughs> I can't get it to build. Um, of the six or seven Docker files in the project, um, I can't actually build the console. So I'm currently working through trying to work out what's going on with that. Um, but the good news is I actually have a cluster that when I do get it built, I can now test it against it. <laughs> I've got a whole, I, I have rebuilt my home cluster. So yeah, it's it's there. Um, I incorporated John's feedback. Um, and the idea is we just want to build it out from here and just get people to do pull requests, add comments, raise issues, and hopefully we can build out that section. Um, quite keen on what the upcoming changes to the community participation is and how it's going to affect that section. But I'm sure that when they're ready to tell us, they'll tell us. So we have the general gist, which is that it's basically they're going to be lining up incoming de uh, uh, developers to um, to take it on as a, you know, a training ground, basically. So that's cool. Um, but I think there's okay, also, we're... there's also, yeah. I was going to say, there's also the shift to mainstream the prow, where the right. would, they, yeah. it seems to be on its, its own. Yeah, because they were, it was a combination before of, of prow and, um, uh, I can't think of the name, Cumulus, maybe? Cirrus, Cirrus, that's it, Cirrus. Cirrus, um, that's it, yeah. yeah. Uh, okay, uh, nothing new on the working group, the separate repo for the working group. Um, I did do a pull request, which I noticed that it failed um, for modifying the working group menu. I'll have to take a look at that. Um, what what uh, it actually one... failed for is actually a one of the little sites that's linked from, I think it's Vadim's guide. Oh, He's being right, very yeah. slow to respond. And that's one of the challenges with having a link checker in, that if right. any of the sites are down or not behaving when we do a push, it breaks our build. So it's a question of- And that was, it, it was trying to get to Minio, right? That's what it's that's saying right. here is that, right? Now I'm gonna rerun this is, and see, maybe I, we'll get a better- I have rerun it twice and it's still playing up. <laughs> really? That's yeah. weird because it doesn't seem like min.io min takes long to load in my browser, but. I, I noticed that it rendered quickly, but it didn't finish downloading for a little while. And um, the other thing I've noticed, and some sites have started putting robot blockers on, which I think break uh, this yeah. as well. So, right. so it, the question comes, is it more valuable to have the link checker on automated, or should we have it as a manual task that we occasionally run to verify? Broken links are horrible on a site, but this happens more often than not that our build right. breaks because as you see, we have a couple of hundred links on our site and the chances of them all being there and all responding in a timely manner. And um, we seem to be hitting this more, more frequently now. So is, is it worth is just taking the link checker off? Is there a way for the link checker to just give warnings as opposed to 
fail the build? I will have a look. I'll have a look. That would be one thing. Yeah, let's add that to as a to do, just because if it could give warnings instead of um, that, that might be interesting. So let's see. We'll... That sort of suggested someone's going to actually look at the logs. <laughs> Um, okay. Uh, but, 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 but. Yes, yeah, so that pull request is is created, and then once we get around that, that will redo the menus in the way that we talked about. So, um, OKD working group, and then subgroups menu, and about, and um, and uh, the uh, um, uh, da, 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 the the, lat, the other sub menu, yeah. which I forget. Right. Uh, Shot OKD updates. Um, I've got a commit to make to the FAQ um, about the release differences. Um, I'm still collecting some information about 410 OKD specific stuff because there's a few specific things in terms of um, uh, stuff that's slightly different from OCP. Ceph testers and CRC, I haven't written anything up. No one's, I haven't seen anyone actually talking about. Seth the, pa uh, Seth, the past couple, past two weeks, or CRC, the new focus seems to be bare metal. Everyone keeps asking questions about bare metal now. <laughs> did, did that kernel, did that fix? Oh, we, we're waiting on a kernel fix for Seth, aren't we? Right, That, that exactly. we talked about in the last, last meeting, yeah, okay. Yeah, Bruce. I think, the that that? The interest, yeah. I, I think the interest is still there. It's just that everybody's waiting. Right. And so there, there's not much point in uh, flooding the channels while we wait. Yeah, uh, and let's see if I can find the... So I think as of last week at the main meeting, it was still something that... Well, the it, is it, it might be a while before it hits the kernel, so... Well, well wasn't it, it, it had to be fixed, which would be in Fedora 36, and then they have Correct. to request the backport to 35. Yeah. Correct, yeah. Yeah, last, last I looked, it hadn't uh, gotten out of the kernel. There was still a pull request outstanding. Okay. Uh, so I'm that's the upstream Linux it. kernel. It hasn't even got to Fedora yet. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. Okay. So it's right. like a long process. Uh, <laughs> Very and, much so. Uh, so probably I'm not going to wait. Uh, I'm going to bite the bullet and uh, back up all my PVs and recreate them yeah so is is this a problem for existing Ceph users yes or it's, is a, it... it's a problem it's a problem it's a problem in, <clears throat> excuse me in updating to 4.10 so okay, if you update 4.10 it... then uh you, you lose Ceph and you can get it back but you lose all of the uh stories nice. that you've had yeah uh, okay. And hopefully, as near as I can tell, you'll still have the, the PVCs, uh, so everything will re request storage. But then, when you uh, get stuff up and running again, uh, which provisions the storage, then they'll all be blank, and you'll have to uh, restore re okay. it. Okay. But it, but that's it. You can a new install will work today. A new it's, it's purely no, an update. Well, uh, oh. No, not with Ceph. Okay. Um, I, I think you, but I mean, if you were aware of all this, it wouldn't be a big deal uh, because you could do your new install um, and we don't have an operator. So you, you have to sort of install Ceph by uh, applying the CRDs right. and, yep. and then waiting for a while. It's actually not that big a deal. And then go in and, and make the fix before you actually start using it. And what's the fix? Uh, the, the fix is um, basically changing the, uh, I, I guess, changing the, the storage um, YAML file so that it doesn't use the, the default uh, uh, way of starting up, which they've changed from synchronous to asynchronous. 
Okay. So you have to change it back to synchronous. Ah, uh, okay. And, and then it, and then it will work with the existing kernels and everything. Now I haven't tried it um, hmm. because I've been, I've been chasing down the rabbit hole of uh, the silly other thing that I uncovered. To, oh yeah. Um, to see whether or not I get anybody to agree that there's actually some underlying bug, or if it's just life. Life, right? Uh, All right. But uh, but by the way, I, I noticed. Um, did anybody else notice that all of a sudden uh, about a hundred uh, operators appeared? It looks like the uh, on the uh, Red Hat side something happened. I did not notice that. Everyone's going to log in and take a look and be like, what? Everyone's now dashing to their um, operator hubs. <laughs> take a look here. We've got 152 community. Yeah. Wow. And my... That, that sort of uncovers that one of the things that we're not very good at is um, history. Yeah. Like when there's a change, the only record of the previous was in your memory. And uh, like, I think we, we used to be at about 40 operators or so um, until but, I don't know when, sometime in the last week or, to, or so. But I mean, the, the challenge is, do they all work? Because even when we right. only had 40, there were still some community operators where Red Hat had their version of an upstream. They changed the community operator to use the Red Hat version, which means you needed a subscription to get to the registry, the Red Hat registry. If that makes sense. Yeah. Right. So, okay, my first reaction to this is Let's actually write something about this and put it on our, t we don't have access to our Blog. Twitter yet, so we can't. Yeah, maybe put it on the, I really wish we had the Twitter thing worked out. Um, let's do it on the blog and um, just do a post like, it's, it's, I don't know. So, I feel like we should just do something like, okay, status of, of OKD or updates or changes or something, something that we can, like update the blog post with latest news or something like that. Like maybe just right. the latest news blog post. Does that make sense? Well, I guess it'd be nice. It? It'd be nice if if we could find somebody that did something that caused this to put up an entry. And because I, if we just say, "Oh well, we discovered that we have these operators today," yeah, see what that happens was my, next week. Right? Yeah, yeah. We don't want to do that. <laughs> my thought was that I'll reach out to Christian. And see if right. he knows anything about it. So, because um, I don't, what's what's the current time in Spain? Uh, quarter past seven. Ah, uh, yeah. So folks are probably all out drinking right now, right? Because that's where Kubecon is. Um. So uh, I'll shoot a message to him and see if I can get some clarity on that. And then I'll let folks know because it seems to me like we should say something because it's like wow our operators yeah. just quadrupled, right? So right. If, if they work, if they work, <laughs> if they Brian work. is such a skeptic. Yeah, no, that's well, fair. I, that's fair. I started trying some of them on on my test cloud, uh, and particularly the uh, certificate manager one. Uh, but. Uh, and let's see what else is there. Well, there's a whole pile of AWS ones which aren't really. I've relevant. noticed that. Yeah. Um, and the the ones that we're most interested in, which would be like you know Tecton and uh, Serverless, uh, and maybe Istio or you know those things, I don't think are there yet. No. Uh, not. The uh, although. Uh, the the Arco CD. What, well, what is hang, it? On. hang on. Um, OpenShift Data Foundation is there. Yeah, is? I noticed really? that too. Oh. And that, that's yeah. a biggie if it works. Yeah, as yeah. I looked at, uh, I pulled up a four eleven cluster. Mm -hmm. 
and of, of, of uh, OpenShift, and they have 152 also in the community. I wonder if wow. a mistake of some kind. <laughs> I, this is all. a huge. This this is actually a huge update. OpenShift yeah. pipelines is there. Uh, We've now there? got some of the Red Hat. I think we may have some of the Red Hat operators now released as a community version. Hmm. Sorry, what, I'm on the wrong. Okay, wait, what version do you? I've got. Sorry, I'm on. I'm on the wrong cluster. I'm on. Ignore me. I'm on the wrong cluster. Okay, I was going to say. I, don't think it, I didn't I'm see OpenShift pipelines. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that would be sorry. That would be very big. <laughs> I've got an OCP and an OKD and different tabs in the browser, and I got the wrong one. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so let's do a little bit of research. I'll find out what the scoop is. I'll reach out to Christian and see how it is that these popped up, and then we'll de we can determine from. From there, and just go. make sure they're not going to vanish tomorrow. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> okay. Um. Oh yeah, go ahead. No, Bruce, did you have anything else? Uh, no, that that's all. Okay. Uh, ba -ba 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 -ba. so CRC, we're waiting for um Diane to get back to us about that external group. See if they want to do it. Um, she said she reached out to them. Uh, we'll see. So the scoop on Twitter is that uh, I still don't have access, and Diane, it's unclear if Diane has access to it as well because it's based on that employee's email address. And I haven't got a response to Diane yet about if we could change MX records to point to our own mail servers. So I don't know anything yet on any of that stuff. This, this all hinges on and I think this is going to affect us into the future is email addresses. How can we have email addresses for the organization? Um, so nothing there. Um, survey, uh, folks haven't really said anything about it, haven't really um, commented or, or updated anything to it. Um, my sense is that it, that's okay because we can wait until KubeCon uh to um you know wait like till next week or the week after to send this out to folks yeah i, I think just... i think the, the last two weeks have been we had red hat summit and now we've right. got um kubecon which is it's the open it's the okd session tomorrow isn't it yeah the mm -hmm. the open commons yeah yeah so i'm guessing uh -huh. people are preoccupied yeah so but i do want to keep this uh, on our palette, because I think that doing this would be fantastic. Doing this Why don't we set a deadline? Why, why don't we say, sure. say we're going to publish it next? Today's next, the seventeenth. Yeah. So next next documentation meeting, we'll finalize it and publish it. So any comments by yeah. two weeks today, right. um, like it. and then then we'll publish it. So that would basically be the thirty first. So we'll send it out on the 1st. We'll finalize it on the 31st, send it out on the 1st. Yep. Fantastic. Uh, bare metal request for testers, bare metal. We don't have Twitter to be able to request. Um, so I don't know if we want to do something other than Twitter and maybe just send something through the working group email. I was going to do that, but I, 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 I actually the quiz. Yeah. Again, I actually think we need to to be clear about what we're asking for. Right. Yeah, I think you're right. You're right. I, um, because just seeing a bare metal tester, is it an IPI? Is it a UPI? Is there anything yeah. specific about it with storage or anything? Did we create a discussion item? Did we create a discussion item to basically say this is what we want okay. to ask for? I don't Maybe think we, we did. Do that. Yeah, I, I'll do one right now. So, so uh, where's the request come? Where has this request come from? Is it based on people's? Yeah, we're just getting a lot of bare metal stuff that like no one knows how to answer because I don't have bare metal, um, okay. and a lot of other folks and the Red Hat folks don't have a lot of bare metal experience. Um, and so the idea is that we at least firm up. It's, we get some testing so that we have some data about how bare metal is working. Because um, there is now the assisted installer, um, like running it locally, right? Uh, and then the other aspect is, is we want to shore up some 
we want to get some people involved in the working group continuously who are bare metal folks because it's a it's an area that in, within the working group we do, we just don't have it covered. Everyone is is cloud um, is either AWS or vSphere basically. So. And 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 I'm guessing the question is if you set up half a dozen VMs in vSphere, would they class as bare metal? Could you actually do bare metal on yeah, VMs? That's, that's, yeah, and I think that that's, that actually comes up a lot is do you consider it that? And I, I feel like we should because that's, you know. Well, I mean, the, so, I mean, this is a genuine question in terms of would that satisfy and be able to answer the bare metal folks? Or are they little things like how do I get a serial console or things that are very, very bare metal specific in terms of or a particular fiber driver for a bit of hardware or a bit of, are, are they predominantly bare metal specific stuff, i.e. the virtual machine gets rid of all that complexity in terms of device drivers and things like that? Or are they generic bare metal stuff where a VM would actually work? Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hmm. Because yeah, I, I know, know you can do bare metal on VMs, but will right. they solve? Do we even have a definition? Like it sounds like that's that's the issue is that we don't really know what bare metal means. Right. Like w whenever I look at it, it seems that uh, like to me, bare metal is like a a raw piece of hardware with nothing on it. Um, and uh, but whenever I look at a bare metal you know, documentation, it seems like they're all assuming that they have Linux on it, which to me is not bare metal. I mean, that's like a, you know, liver or something like that, which is sort of a different uh, branch. But somehow those are conflated in, in my mind. So I, I don't know that, and it could be, maybe it's just me that's confused, but uh, uh, do we know what exactly people mean when they say bare metal? And I think that that's so. If I look at the documentation, which you know, you know, Michael, you can speak to this probably better than any of us. Is it's it's bare metal is just in one of the install options in the documentation, and it doesn't actually show, um, like, uh, oh, Michael dropped. Um, it doesn't actually show any type of explanation of what they mean by bare metal. It just says you can install OKD on bare metal. And doesn't it actually start? Doesn't it start with an ISO that you download and boot this? This it, the node it does, yeah. So, yeah. and then I think it does use libvirt. It does. And builds yep. the builds the um, the containerization on top of that. Yeah. So, I guess. Maybe that should be one of our tasks is to actually define what we mean by that. You know, and bring I mean, this to the larger group to actually like flesh this out. Yeah, because I mean, I'm, I'm guessing a lot of people will, would have access to say a virtual machine that can set up a, a virtual machine and do a, an SNO install on a virtual machine. True. Sure. Right. If that would class as bare metal testing, then we probably have a bigger audience that can do that. Right. Then if we actually say you need a dedicated bit of hardware right. with this many no this much memory and this many CPU cores, that's right. probably a bigger ask. Well, so what should so should we bring this to the larger group? Uh, a discussion. Yeah, about I mean, what I, do we actually mean? Yeah, I mean, well, and what's different? Like as as Brian was saying, you know, if it's. Um, you know, when you're saying bare metal, what specific things are you worried about? Right. All right, let's put that as a question to the larger group. Uh, I'll put it um, in the to-do. But it, it sounds like a documentation issue that uh, in the, bare metal install section, it should maybe talk more about exactly what bare metal means. You know, because like in the VMware 
section, which I'm most familiar with, it does go into in fairly great detail. Yeah. You know. All right. Uh, style updates. I think that's all done. So we can pull that. Yeah, I, I, I think we need to ask um, Diane if, if Brand's available to do any more work. Because just, I mean, just thinking about what we've spoken today is having an area on the home page for latest news where you can put something on that'll be there for two weeks and then automatically go away so we don't have to worry about having latest news and it's certainly yeah. nine months old. Yeah. Um, so a feature like that added onto the home page, I think would be useful. So do we have Brandon for additional tasks or has his funding with Red Hat expired or anything like that? So. Right, that'd be a good thing. But as far as, I, as far as I'm aware, the styling update is finished. He's delivered it, it's live, and that piece is done. But I think there are um, updates. And when I'm talking about updates, I will just, um, last weekend, I did update all the tooling in the automation. So I went through and made sure that we had the latest versions of MK Docs, of Material, and toolings. We were still using an old um, CentOS image to actually base the build on. So I've put that to Fedora 35 now as our base container to actually run the, the MK doc build within. Um, yeah. By the way, that task did succeed this time when I ran it. Oh, great. Yeah, so I'm gonna merge it right now. You could have actually merged it before. Yeah, task... but I do like to, I, I don't like circumventing tests because the whole point of a test is to tell you, I you know. something. I know, <laughs> there's been a couple of times. Well, because I mean, what it's going to do, it's now going to rerun exactly the same script right. to actually publish it. Right. So... Uh, yeah. Uh, bu -bu -bu -bu. Oh, okay, so now we're up to new business. So I'll just pull some publishing updates or style update, um, anything new about the publishing? I think, are, are, are we agreeing then that we should disable at least temporarily until you find out if those can be warnings instead of errors? Can we just disable it for now? Or do you want I mean, to I, work the other way? I mean, I, I get notifications. So whenever anything fails, I go I go poke it and prod it. And, okay. um, and if it is blocked, I bypass it. <laughs> okay, all right. I'll well, tell you I, what, I, I I'll leave that to you then. I'll, if, okay. if, a merge, if a test fails, let's leave it to Brian to make the decision on that. Yeah, I, I do go review the files and check it's okay and look at what the failure was, um, making sure that the, it's not the change, it's just introducing the breaking feature, it's something old. Um, and then I'll, I, I, I get it working, but. I'll probably do that this evening or within by the weekend. I'll have that either sorted or. Excellent. Okay. Um, next up is. Uh, have Zoom. Okay, so this came up before. Currently, we're using BlueJeans. It doesn't have as much adoption. I don't have direct access to the recordings because this is actually um, Diane's account. And so we're behind again uh, because I have to reach out to Diane. Diane has to make time in her busy schedule to grab the recordings and, and share them out with me, et cetera, et cetera. And also Zoom has, is more feature rich out the gate. It's, it seems, I could be wrong. That seems to be the case, and folks are nodding, so that seems to be general consensus. How do folks feel about switching to Zoom? Do we have an account we can use, or would we get kicked out after? Well, so here's the, here's the thing. It would have to be community funded, meaning one of us would, I'm more than happy to contribute, um, but we would want an email address that multiple of us have access to. Right, um, and 
you know, one way or another, we need to find, find a resolution to the email thing. We need a dedicated email for all of these accounts that we want to set up, you know, in different yeah. services and stuff like that. So assuming we figure out the email thing, what do folks think about moving to Zoom? You know, I, I use Zoom for just about everything else. Uh, but uh, we have an institutional Zoom account. Uh, so that, that gives you a little bit more security if you care about that sort of thing. Um, but I mean, once, yeah, you get, I think... once you get it going, it's not that big a deal either way. Right? Yeah, I was going to say, because I think with, with Zoom on the free level, you do have a a number of participant limits and a time limit. You can come straight back in, but we don't really want to be kicking everyone out. And is then it, is, have but I think join. it's like less than an hour, isn't it? <clears throat> it's 40 minutes. 40, 40, 40 minutes, minutes. That's it, right, yeah. Um, um, I'd, I'd be willing to, to, to contribute towards the, I think the, the least expensive one is like 60 uh a year or something like that i don't know let's take a look um plans and pricing uh oh i guess it's a little bit more it's like 150 a year for the pro um and it's up to 100 participants large meetings one gigabyte of recording whiteboard I don't know. So that would be, we'd have to maybe put out our hats to the community and ask folks to chip in or ask some organization to sponsor us, our community. I was, was going to say, I mean, is, I mean, is Red Hat open to sponsoring OKD as a community or? That's a good question. It's a really good question. Would would they be willing to to do that? I don't know. I don't know. And with this new model, that might complicate things if it is in fact going to be a stepping stone for their new employees. Because to me, yeah. then it's like, okay, well, what then? What is what is the control that's going to be exerted Cause, cause I mean, on this? <laughs> I I actually think that that is part of the problem is that. We're not truly an open source community because at the minute, everything is built around the Red Hat product, the build, the process. Um, and, and yes, we can um, do things in a community way, but we can't really decide the direction of OKD. Right. That's a, that's a Red Hat product manager's um, right. activity. So getting an external company to support, I think is going to be a little bit more challenging maybe. Um, because at the end of the day, it, it's a Red Hat commercial product that's driving the direction, not a community. There's no community governance. But, so I think we should certainly start the conversation with Diane. Yeah. Right, I think that's um, reasonable. Because I mean, like, it's it like, oh, remember OKD doesn't stand for anything. Right, <laughs> that's right. It doesn't stand uh, for anything. So we're not OpenShift, which is you know, Red Hat proprietary. So I, th I think yeah. we're sort of in that gray zone. But if if no one has had success building it from source yet, uh, and multiple people have tried, then we're not right. really even uh, well, a community distribution per se. Right. Well, I mean, when when uh, Christian is talking about Prow. He's talking about the Red Hat internal running. Exactly. Prow, right. Right. Yeah. I mean, you can like I haven't tried it yet, but uh, you can run Prow on uh, Kubernetes and presumably OKD. Right. Um, so the question would, I, I guess, the next logical step once they've got everything on their internal Prow is whether or not you could externalize that to a Prow running on OKD. I mean, and, and the problem on somebody's is that public OKD. OKD their public prow, which is some of the problems I'm having, points to their private registry. Ah, uh, right. right, yeah, yeah. So I, I'm seeing in the build files, there's points to registries to images that I don't have access to. So Brian, did you catch that conversation between John and Christian 
um, yep. where Christian said, oh, there's, there's um, parallel for all of these. <clears throat> is, is there? And I asked the question, like, is it every single one at that particular registry? And well, I didn't get a response and, to that, so I don't know. And, and this is it. How do you know? Because I, I, I don't see where they're actually stored. And it, it's not like it's, it was not key.io. It was a public space within their registry, but you can't get like a directory of those right. images available. Right. Um, right. But I mean, so, everything, I mean, I, all those you should be able to rebuild, right? I mean, like if it's open source, well, everything that's on their internal registry that they've built, you should be able but to build the source from a, from a Docker file or whatever. Who knows? But this is it. Where's the source of that? How, how, right. how do I actually go right. find out where of the course, source I, of that? I totally particular. agree with you. Right. You would have to yeah. go through that entire list of images, all 60 or whatever it is in that list every time there's a release, and find the right. respective source repo and build, which would be but, I mean, a lot. What's interesting is like, you know, you can, you can build Kubernetes from, from source. Sure. Yes, <laughs> but that, that that is uh, all in the public domain. There's no commercial is. product around it, right? Um, and and it may be that everything here is in open is in open source. It's it may or somewhere be in the in the several hundred repos that's in the open source GitHub. But the challenge is, do you have time to actually go and put all the pieces together? Right. Well, it's, it's slightly and, and, worse than that, because even if you have time, you have no way of validating that there weren't some internal tweaks. Exactly. 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 So, um, and, and this is what I'm going through with the console project at the minute. It's just like out of the box, I did a Podman build, failed. I did a Docker build just in case, failed. Um, <laughs> um, and now I'm, well, why did it fail? You know, I'm now going down the rabbit hole of, let's try and figure this out. Um, as I say, there's a dockerfile.product, which suggests it's the product build rather than the dev build. And that then uses these internal images, which I don't have access to. So uh, yeah, I, I, I think this is, now that we started this technical track, these are the sort of things and we want to start off when we actually figure out what the problem is, we want to start raising issues and make sure that every project in the release info where we point the, the URL, every project there is buildable from the readme file within the project. There's no ambiguity, there's no guessing. Um, so I think that's where we want to get to. Um, and I think Mike made the, 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 the comment that within Prow, they don't actually take note of what's here because they have a global replace where they'll actually look at the thing and Prow will actually replace the base image with the current one. So Prow doesn't actually use that from image as stated. So that should always be the public one, the, the OKD one by default. And if every project did that, then I think we'd be in a much better position. So again, it, it's just little little baby steps to actually try and improve this step by step. Yeah. All right. Well, that's that's a lot for us to digest, but we'll approach Diane and we'll find out. Um, and a lot, this just sprang from uh, the discussion of the Zoom, but it's a reoccurring topic. Like yeah. what? What actually? And and if we had something definitive from Red Hat. I would feel better if it was actually like, even if they're saying we're going to continue to control this at X level, just to hear them say that or write it down somewhere so that we know, so that we're not always, where do we stand? How much effort do we put into this? Should we be yeah. doing separate resources and what, you know? Yeah. All right. Well, we have our to do's. Uh, ahead of us and the to do's are check on link checking give, to give warnings instead of errors. That's for you, Brian. Um, yep. uh, let's see what else. Um, uh, announcements on operator change. I'll check with Christian first. Uh, bring bare metal discussion to the greater group. And um, uh, 
Brian, get the status of, of Brandon for more style work to find out. I don't know if maybe you can reach out directly to him to find yeah, out. Yeah, I've got his. Doing. Okay. I've, I've got him on Slack. Um, uh, one other thing is, I know that we've got a discussion group around it, but we're not very good at actually contributing to discussion groups. Um, what do we want? Because I think we should actually set a timetable for the move to the new Git org. I, I was going to, I could have chimed in, but I always feel like, I feel like the three of us do a lot of the talking. <laughs> And I feel like we need to put some effort into get, getting other folks chiming in. But let's, yeah, let's set a, set a timeline on that. Yeah. July 1st. That, that works for me. All right. Sure. But yeah, I, I just think we need to actually set a timeline on and then we can work on a migration plan because um, yeah. otherwise it's never going to happen. Yeah. We've had the repo now for what, two months? Yeah. Six weeks? You know, and, and to just... be fair, some of it is also my uh, hesitancy because of not knowing what this change is and what it's going to mean. Um, yeah, I, I, I was going to say because, I mean, we're, I, it, in reality, we're, we're really talking about the OpenShift and the OKD.io repos. They're the only right. two that we really control. Everything else is going to have to stay. Um, what happens with the operators, where, where the community operators end up living? If they're being main, maintained and managed and built by Prow, they're probably going to be in the OpenShift org. Um, hmm. Yeah, and I don't know. Well, I mean, they could. Now, let's, from a technical perspective, they could pull in from an external repo and use it in their internal Prow. So it, that that would be possible, but they would have to set that up to happen. Well, and, I'm, I'm, and, but I'm and, just saying, you know what I mean, like I'm, allow us to submit code and then I'm have just, it pulled in. But majority of the operators are going to come from OpenShift source, so it's effectively just a build config in Prow yeah. that is yeah. going to build the operator catalog. So yeah. there's possibly nothing to go in a repo in our org. Yeah. Other than a proud project, which, <laughs> but yeah, we're speculating. I'm speculating there. We're so. speculating, yeah, for sure. All right. Okay, well, uh, yeah. Last thing is going to say, I'm not about next week, so I'm not going to make the main meeting next week. Okay. Uh, you know? I will be there at the main meeting. I. Um, my sense is that it, the discussion will probably be about a lot of this stuff, because if we can get Christian there or, and or Vadim, I think we need to sort of hammer away at this, like, okay, what can we really do? What's going to get impacted by this change that's happening on the Red Hat side? And how much effort should we be putting into this? You know, at the last May meeting, Christian said, yeah, I think you should continue working, doing external builds and 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 whatnot in external testing. But then how does that work if Red Hat is gonna be it still controls the sources and whatnot? Like I mean I, I, I think if they're open to us doing pull requests against the sources. Right. But for me that that means that I have to be confident that my build and my local build and test isn't going to fall down on the first hurdle when it gets to the Red Hat system. So for me to feel confident about doing a pull request, I have to feel confident that I can do a build. Right. If I can't replicate what's there now, then I can't really make a change to it and feel it's a valid change. No, but that's the, in the same vein as what I was saying a few minutes ago, they could create a, a page that gets generated with results from pull requests that isn't directly within Prow, right? Like they could mirror some of the results from Prow out to the outside world to let people know the success, you know, yeah. of, of their tests and stuff like that and, and details and, and whatnot. Um, but, but I think I think just from a confidence point of view, if you put, if you if you contribute to an, an open source project, you don't want to look stupid. You, you want to actually yes. get some validation sure. that your, your change. Well, yeah, basically, 
there, there should be something that you can fork and you know that's a reliable copy yeah and you you build your you know change against your fork and uh you know before you do your pull request you you know you update the fork to make sure it's current and then you try it again and then you put it in and the the way it is um that's not possible yeah i mean like you know you you can fork tiny bits and pieces of things but you're still missing uh, some critical parts that you can't build uh and it doesn't make well, I, I guess the um, like the OKD part is um, they've removed the the, brand, the Red Hat branding, right? I mean that's part of their the changes, um, and you know somehow there's these, but you know like a lot of a lot of the OCP stuff is presumably open source, but somehow there's these little sticklers that. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if it's so much um, Red Hat philosophy as just that everybody's busy and they don't have time to think about it. Um, and I, I would hope that it's the they don't have time to to worry about it uh, because uh, if that's the case, then you have some chance of fixing it. But yeah. I mean, if certainly with Diane, if she wants to bring in. The outside community, then it has to be possible for them to do the normal things. Yeah, and, and and I think Mike made a very interesting comment a few weeks ago. Is that there are some internal Red Hat engineers that aren't really that aware of OKD, yeah. so they the way that they work in the projects, they're not deliberately trying to to stop us doing things, but they're really doing it for the prow build, so they know what prow needs and what the internal systems need. And that's where their effort is going. They're not really considering a community having to sort this stuff out that doesn't have access to internal Red Hat systems. Yeah. And, and I think that's part of the challenges that that you're then trying to pick up that that content from outside in, and it you don't always have a great time. So I managed to reach Christian. He doesn't have any idea about the operator situation, but he's <laughs> going to look into okay. it. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Ah, this was a great discussion. A lot of great so, ideas. But, yeah, but, but by the way, uh, on the Ceph side, uh, it looks like the patch is made into the testing branch. Okay. Okay, so that's, that's a good. small bit of progress. Yeah. So that sorry, that's the testing branch of the upstream of the kernel. Linux kernel, the kernel project. Right. Yeah. Right. So not the Fedora. Yeah. Right. So it'll go oh, yeah. into kernel once it goes through testing, then into 36. Into then Fedora 36. We have to request a backport to 35. Backport into 35, yeah. Although by that point, we may be on 36. That's a good point. Yeah. I'm okay the 411. <laughs> right. <laughs> exactly. Right. That too. All right. Well, let's go ahead and, and end for today. Um, Brian, I will see you in two weeks. Bruce, I'll probably see you next week. Um, we'll put this meeting to a close. Yep. I'll stop recording.